Welcome to Course 1, Unit 1, Lesson 5, Warren Buffett Stock Basics. In this lesson, we have four lesson objectives. The first lesson objective is to learn Warren Buffett's four rules for buying stocks. The second objective is basic Warren Buffett valuation techniques. The third lesson objective is Warren Buffett's opinion on the market. And the fourth lesson objective is understanding Buffett's opinion on patience and individuality. So let's get started. Okay, so this lesson is just a quick and brief overview of the fundamentals of Warren Buffett. Now as you go throughout the rest of the website, uh, you're going to get a lot more information on all the stuff that you're, that's contained in this short lesson. So what I'm going to start off with is saying that Warren Buffett is a person who likes simple things. He likes to focus on fundamentals. He doesn't like to get down in the weeds on certain things. He, he likes to look at things uh, from a very simplistic viewpoint. And so he has four rules that he uses for investing in stocks. So the first rule um, is that the stock has to be stable and understandable. For a lot of people, they're kind of attracted to a stock that might be volatile because it might have huge rewards uh, in the end, even though there's a lot of risk associated with it. And the reason Warren Buffett isn't attracted to a stock like that is because he knows that a, a stable and understandable stock is something that he can actually calculate. So when the company is producing the same earnings year in and year out, and they consistently grow their equity at 10% a year, or whatever the case might be, he can predict what that company is going to be worth next year and the year after that. And so one of his four rules that he absolutely sticks to is that he never invests in a company that he doesn't determine that is stable and something that he can understand. So the second rule is that a stock must have a long-term prospect. And what I mean by that is he's not going out and he's not investing in a company that uh, sells TV antennas. He's, he's the type of person that looks at a, a company and he says, is this company going to be around 30 to 40 years from now and is their product still going to going to be something that the world still needs in that duration of time. The, the reason he does this is because he likes to, to buy a company and hold it because when he holds it, the growth of that company is actually happening in the market price and then he never pays any taxes on that growth. So really the long-term uh, prospects is something that really is wrapped up in the taxes and we're going to cover uh, this a whole lot more in the second course of this website. But that's the second rule that he always follows whenever he buys stock. Okay, the third one's a little bit harder to uh, to assess as a small investor, not a, not a large investor like him, and that's that a stock must be managed by vigilant leaders. Now, one of the things that I roll up into this tenant is that the, the company has to be managed by individuals that manage debt well. So one of the things I really stay away from and then Buffett really stays away from is any company that has a lot of debt. Um, and I kind of roll that up under this rule so that for us, it's a little hard for your for your standard investor that's not worth the nearly the amount of money as Warren Buffett. It's kind of hard to go in there and have a meeting with a CEO and determine whether it's he's an ethical person that you would, uh, wouldn't mind uh, owning part of his business. So uh, that's, that's the third rule. And the fourth rule that we have is that Warren Buffett never buys a stock that is overvalued. He, he must buy a stock that's undervalued. So what he does is he goes in and, and like I said before, he determines what he thinks the intrinsic value of a stock is so if he determines that the stock is worth $50, he's always going to try to buy that stock for under what he determined the value to be, let's say $40 is what he would be comfortable buying the stock for. He's never going to overpay for that. And so the name of the game really comes down to is finding that intrinsic value, and that's the fourth tenant. Now I'd like to say that each of these rules, each one of these four rules, all have to be met. He, he never goes out and says, well, rule number three and four is met, so I'll buy this company. He always ensures that all four of these rules are always met or he never buys the company. And I, I recommend that you do the same because it, it really works out well. So let's take a quick look at rule number four where a stock must be undervalued. Now I'd like to highlight that in course two, I have an entire unit just dedicated to calculating the intrinsic value. And Although I know a lot of people would like to jump right into that and start determining what some of these companies are worth, there's a whole lot of lessons that you really got to learn to wrap your head around all the terms and the intricacies of calculating the intrinsic value of a company. But right now I'm going to teach you a little trick that uh, Warren Buffett did that whenever he worked for Benjamin Graham for a few years. And this is a really interesting and, and quick, easy way to kind of 
pick through companies that are worth investigating and companies that aren't. So as we looked at the last four lessons, we learned that the, the market price, the earnings, and the book value were three very important terms. And what, what Warren Buffett and Benjamin Graham did is they tied all three of these terms together in a quick way to kind of assess a company. So when we looked at uh, Nancy's uh, ice cream stand from the previous lessons, um, we took her ice cream stand and we divided it up into 10,000 shares. And when we did that, we found out that the market price for one share, because she was wanting $100,000 for the business, that the market price she was asking for the business was $10. We saw that her net income was $20,000 when we divided out the shares. Her earnings uh, ended up being $2 a share. And then the $7,000 in equity that she had off of her balance sheet um, when we divided that by 10,000, uh, gave us 70 cents in book value. So these were the these were really the important terms that we learned in the first four lessons. And what Warren Buffett does with this quick little uh, evaluation tool that I'm going to teach you here is he wraps all three of those terms into one quick assessment. And so what we're going to do is, as you look at the earnings there, that tells us our potential returns. You're going to take that and you're going to combine it with your book value, which is your assessment of your margin of safety, and you're going to get a quick and easy way to assess the company. So let's go to the next slide here. And as we look, uh, I'm going to start off with the earnings. So that was the middle number. So the earnings here, I'm just going to show you, we talked about the price to earnings ratio um, in one of the previous lessons. And what the price to earnings ratio is doing is we're taking the price and we're looking at the earnings. The price is $10 and the earnings is $2. And all you're doing is you're just dividing those terms. You're taking the price divided by the earnings, which is 10 divided by 2, and that gives you a ratio of 5. And as you learned in the previous lesson, the way that you look at that ratio is you, you say this saying, for every $5 I'm going to spend buying this business, I can expect $1 in return one year later. And so when we see the PE of 5, what that really means, if the company can actually turn all those earnings into money that's going into your pocket, which that's really the thing we're going to figure out in course two of this website. But let's assume all those earnings go into your pocket. That's going to give you a 20% return. And all the, the only way you've got to figure that out is just take the $2 in earnings, divide it by the market price of $10, and that's 20%. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you when you go onto a website and you're looking up a company, when you see the PE is equal to 25, as we move over to the chart on the right, when the PE is 25, that's actually giving you a 4% return, and that's assuming if the company can turn all of the earnings into money that's actually going to be realized into your pocket. The best you're going to do is 4% with a PE of 25. Now, when you look at the PE of 20, your return goes to 5%. And so as you go clear down to the PE of 5, which is the one that we had for Nancy's business, the return actually goes clear up to 20%, which is pretty high. Now, the thing you got to realize is when the PE is really low like that, and then your return is really high, what you can expect on the margin of safety is that your margin of safety is, is going to get worse. So let's go ahead and we just looked at the, the price to earnings. Now let's look at the price to the book value. This is a this is a ratio that we haven't looked at yet, and it's called the price to book value ratio. Okay, and we're pretty much doing the same thing that we did with the the, the PE ratio in that we're taking the price, which is $10, and we're dividing it by the book value. And when we do that, you come up with a ratio. And so if you look there, we're taking $10 divided by 70 cents, and that gives us a ratio of a 14.3. Okay, so what in the world does 14.3 mean? Well, if you go back kind of to the similar phrase that we said before, every $14.3 you spend buying this company you're going to have $1 of equity uh, in the business. So that's not very good. And just like the, the PE, the lower the number you go on this, the better it is for you because you have more safety on your investment. So uh, let's go ahead and, and look at the price to book compared to the safety here. So if you had a company that had a price to book value of a five on the ratio there, that means that only 20% of what you're buying that company for, let's say it was a $100,000 business, only $20,000 is going to be the equity in the business. So if you bought it for $100,000 and you needed to end the business today, you'd only get $20,000. And so as you go down that those numbers through 3, 2, 1.5 to 1, and then 0.7, you can see how that safety changes and that the price of book value when it's a 1, 
That means if you'd buy the business today, okay, and you'd let's buy the business for a hundred thousand dollars. That if you would sell the business immediately after you bought it, you could liquidate the business and get a hundred thousand dollars. That's what that price to book of a one equals. Now the price to book of a 0.7 means you could actually buy the business, buy all those shares, end the business, and actually make money because the book value is actually more valuable than the price that you bought it for. And believe it or not, there's actually companies on the stock market that trade like that. And just like we learned in the last uh, slide, when the when the price to book is that low, guess what? The earnings are probably really bad. So there's your trade-off. When the price to book is really low, your earnings are probably going to be really bad. And when the when the earnings are really good, the price to book is going to probably be really bad. So that's that's your trade-off. So what does all this mean that we're talking about here? So what I've done is on the left-hand side, those are the PE ratios. That's our price and our earnings. And then on the right-hand side, we have the price to the book value. We know that the earnings talk about the return we're going to get on our money. And we know that the book value talks about the safety that's involved with the investment. So what Warren Buffett and Benjamin Graham did, and this is back before they had internet where they could just you know put in a search query of, of where they wanted the numbers to turn out. What they had were really big books. And in these books, they had all these ratios and the, and the prices for all kinds of different stocks that were trading on the New York Stock Exchange. And so what Buffett would do is he'd go down through all the columns of these books because they'd be in really big, uh, you know, this book was huge. And he'd look through the book and he'd see a ticker and then he'd see, you know, the trading price. He'd see the, the P.E. ratio. He'd see the price to book ratio. And... A quick way that he could determine whether it was a company that he wanted to go after or not is he would find the PE that was low and he'd look at the book value that was low. And as, as you look through this, the PE that he was really focusing on and that he was trying to find is he was trying to always find a business that had a, that had a PE of 15 or lower. Okay, so as you can see there, I've highlighted that the 15 and lower is what he was really going after. So he was looking for a return of, uh, of something that was better than 6.6% is what he was looking for. Then over on the price to book, which is our safety net, he would, he would try to always find a company that had a price to book that was better or, or lower than 1.5 because you can see that's where all your safety was. So he came up, him and Benjamin Graham came up with a great idea of, well, if we're always trying to find a company that has a, a PE below 15, and we're also trying to find a company that has the price to book below 1.5, why don't we just take those two numbers and multiply them together? And if we multiply the 15 times the 1.5, that equals 22.5. So what he said is, is I'm looking at this big book of all these ratios and terms. I can quickly assess whether a company is something I'm, I'm interested in by taking that PE and multiplying it times the price to book, and if the number comes out below 22.5, this is probably some a, a company that I really want to take a closer look at. And the reason that he was doing this is because, as you can see here, uh, the little triangle that I have that compares the price to the earnings to the book value, that incorporates all the variables that we're really concerned with. We're concerned about what price are we buying this thing at, what do we think the return is going to be, and how much safety is involved with this investment. And all of those terms are wrapped up into just taking the PE and multiplying it times the price of the book and making sure that that number is below 22.5. So that's a really quick and easy tool that Buffett used to do whenever he was younger and working for Benjamin Graham, um, that he would go through all these big books and actually try to find uh, companies that were below the 22.5. Now, as we go further along in this site and you really get into course two, you're going to find out that valuations get a lot more complex than this little simple model. But if you want to go out and try this with real companies, I think you'll find that it actually gives you some really good picks um, for such a short and easy assessment of just taking two ratios and multiplying them together and seeing if the number's below 22.5. Okay, so I just did this real quick with uh, Nancy's business. If you remember, the PE for Nancy's business was a 5, and then her price to book was the 14.3. And so what I did is I took the 5 times the 14.3, and that equaled 71.5. So you can see that if we were going to uh, try to run Nancy's business through Buffett's little uh, tool here, his little valuation tool, 
um, she would have missed the mark by a lot. She was way overvalued because we want the number to be below 22.5 and she was at 71.5. Okay, so let's transition into just kind of, and this, is, this isn't something that we have really talked about, but in unit three of this first course, um, that whole unit is focused on understanding the market. But um, Warren Buffett always looks at the market itself as nothing more than something that can facilitate him buying companies at a, at a low price. Mm -hmm. His opinion of the market goes into rule number four, which is that a stock must be undervalued. He uses that market to his advantage opposed to something that he's scared of. So he has the opinion, and this is his quote, I buy on the assumption that the stock market could close tomorrow and not reopen for another five years. That's, that's how he looks at it. When he buys that company, he truly plans on owning that company forever and that those shares forever because he's buying it based on the assumption that I'm buying this company, it's going to give me a 10 to 15% return based off of what I'm buying it. And there's no reason why I'd want to sell a company that's paying me that kind of return. So he could care less what it does on the day to day. All he's doing is he's going along, he's looking at what he thinks a company's worth. And if the market's offering him a price that's much lower than what he thinks it's worth, well, then he buys it. The overall view that he has of the market is that some days you'll get offered great buys and other days you'll get offered horrible deals. But your job is to know when it's a bad deal and that you don't take it. The last thing I want to talk about is Warren Buffett's opinion on patience and individuality. So his opinion on patience is that you know, there's no way you're going to be a successful uh, trader unless you absolutely positively have patience and that you stick to your fundamentals. Um, he, you know, the, I love the saying, pigs get fat but hogs get slaughtered because it's so true when the person goes out there and they're trying to find the company that's going to give that's going to double or triple their money in three months unfortunately for that person I just don't think that they're going to have much success in the long run you have to be a very patient person that's happy with making 10 to 15 percent returns on your money and if you can do that consistently you're probably going to be very successful in the long run um, the other thing that Warren Buffett's really big on is thinking for yourself I can't stress this enough don't ever base your stock investing off of other people's opinions. When you do that, you're probably going to find yourself in trouble. I, I remember back in 2008 and 2009 when the market was really low. And for me, I was extremely excited because I was able to buy companies at just unbelievable values and had almost no debt. Almost every company I was buying back then still had no debt, but yet they were trading at great values. And I would look around and everyone was just screaming bloody murder that, you know, oh, the whole economy is going to collapse and that the, you know, the world's going to end and everything else. But that was the time to be buying great companies. And I was thinking for myself and, you know, it really paid off well. And um, the, the same thing applies whenever the stock market is doing really good and you go in the work and you hear everyone talking about what they're buying. And that's probably a, a really good indicator that you probably shouldn't be buying stocks. I found out that if I was always doing what everyone else was doing, I was probably doing something wrong. So that's something that I would recommend to you that as you get out there and you start getting more involved in the stock market and, and also with bonds, which we'll discuss in the next unit. Um, if you're doing what everyone else is talking about, you're probably falling into the trap that you might not be doing things right. So always think for yourself, uh, conduct your own valuations on what you think things are worth, and then go to the market and see if the market's offering you a decent price for that value that you think it's worth. Okay, in lesson five, we discussed four different lesson objectives. The first lesson objective was to learn Warren Buffett's four rules for buying stocks. The second was to discuss uh, a real basic valuation technique that Warren Buffett used uh, whenever he worked with Benjamin Graham. The third was Warren Buffett's opinion on the market. And the fourth was understanding Warren Buffett's opinion on patience and individuality. So I hope uh, you learned a lot here in the first unit. And I look forward to working with you guys in unit two where we discuss uh, basic bond valuation and techniques.